Hello and welcome to our presentation about automatic loss checking for annotated corpora. My name is Herbert Lange and this work is in collaboration with Rosna Asna and Amy Isard. Um, the problem we want to tackle is corpse creators often lack feedback about the quality of their corpus data. And we know that feedback can improve the data in general and also the coherency of the data. Um, coherency of annotations is very important for systematic identification of ling linguistic phenomena and allows for later reuse of the data. And to tackle the problem, we aim to provide an automatic corpus service that checks and provides feedback to corpus creators about potential issues in their glosses. There are many ways of annotating corpus data. The one we want to focus on most uh, in this uh, talk is glossing and quite specifically interlinear glossing, which has a very long tradition, as you can see here with a very old uh, gloss text, but where a Latin text is glossed in Old High German. A more recent uh, form of glossing can be found in combination with sign languages, uh, where instead of uh, glossing a written text, um, the recorded signs uh, are glossed. And um, traditionally, uh, interlinear glosses has three levels. The first level here in the first line is um, the transcription, quite often of spoken data. Then there is a level of uh, glossing, adding morphological and lexical uh, information to the transcription. And finally, there is the level of translation to make the data accessible also to people who don't know the initial language. It's a bit uh, different for sign languages. There, uh, glosses group tokens of manual signs. Um, they are not translations, but approximations of the meaning. And there's also a broad variety of languages because the language used in glossing uh, usually matches with the language that's commonly spoken in the geographic area where the signs have been recorded. But there's also usually English for the international audience. One uh, challenge with sign language glosses is that there is a wide variety how sign language corpora can be glossed. And um, there is less of a standard. And so there, uh, it really depends on the corpus what uh, exact style of glossing is used. And here we see examples from two corpora from the German sign language corpus um, and from the Dutch sign language corpus, and they have different levels of complexity. The Dutch sign language corpus just uses the lexical, uh, the lexemes, while the German sign language corpus combines uh, the lexemes also with uh, special tokens and uh, additional information, such as these digits and letters at the end of the tokens. As a next step, I want to sketch the gloss checking algorithm, both for Leipzig style and for sign language. Um, usually we require some documentation of what kind of glosses we expect, especially for the grammatical glosses. And to look up the lexical glosses, we need a matching dictionary. And uh, if we don't have the documentation or the dictionary, um, the gloss checker can at least summarize the tokens it encountered. And what the checker does is it segments the token into the lexical and morphological annotations. Then it looks up the lemmas in the dictionary and compares the morphological glosses to a given corpus documentation. And implement, it is implemented as a backtracking algorithm and using efficient dictionary lookup using dictionary automata. 
for sign languages, it is quite similar. We need documentation for a particular corpus, and we need a dictionary or lexical resources for uh, lexemes. And uh, for example, for the German sign language corpus, we start by removing numbers and letter indicators at the end of the token. Then we also remove the special parts that start with a dollar, such as dollar num or dollar name. And the remaining part is uh, the combination of the lexemes. So we split them into the separate lexemes and can use dictionaries and lexical resources to look them up. Um, we can also use uh, resources such as Wikidata for personal names. And one additional feature we added is typo detection. So in case that a lexeme or a gloss cannot be identified automatically based on the dictionary or the documentation, we can look for, and if it's a very uncommon token, we can look for very similar tokens uh, that are more common. And with very similar, mean we mean edit distance, um, currently at an edit distance of one. And this can be implemented efficiently using um, approximate dic uh, dictionary lookups using Liebenstein Automata. In general, the implementations uh, developed over uh, quite some time in, in several iterations, both in Python and Java. And currently it is included in the formerly HZSK in Hamburg uh, corporate services and the Refco process for uh, developing corpus documentation for reference corpora. And the Leipzig style gloss checking has been tested in this context of Refco while the sign language gloss checking has been tested on several corpora. Uh, as mentioned several times before, the German sign language corpus, but also the Dutch sign language corpus and the Israeli sign language corpus, which is currently work in progress. An important part, as you might already have noticed, uh, is the do documentation. And if we look at Leipzig style glossing, then the documentation usually uh, contains glosses such as A for agent argument or DU for dual. Um, but of course, these glosses, even though they there is a standard set, can also be extended. And uh, sometimes very specific tokens um, are combinations of uh, several glosses. For example, ASP.A, which is a modification of aspect, which means italic. But here the dot A is, uh, can be ambiguous with the, the A for agent uh, argument. And because the documentation can be ambiguous, we need backtracking to uh, guarantee that we are not getting stuck in checking. To uh, uh, demonstrate uh, how the algorithm works, we will now show a few examples. Here we look at the second uh, gloss token, uh, 2du.a.3sg.p and so on. And we first split on the dashes, um, which is on the morpheme to morpheme correspondence. And we end up with two morphological and one lexical part. Uh, the lexical part can, for example, be checked using a dictionary. And the first mor morphological part is still complex and can be subdivided in 2du, a, 3, g, and p. And if we also get rid of the two and three for the person, we end up only with morphological glosses, which are in our documentation. We have seen before, we have A for agent, DU for dual, SG for singular, and P for patient, and foot for future. Uh, so in this example, everything works without any issues. But if we look at a different example, um, 
here we split on the equal sign. And we again have a lexical part, which um, is OK. We can directly look it up. We also have one very simple morphological part where we only need to get rid of the uh, three. But if we try to split the second part in a naive way, we end up with NEG, ASP, and EC. But EC itself is not documented in our corpus. Um, so we made some mistake. Instead, we backtrack. And in instead of splitting at every dot, we split only on the first dot. And we end up with a gloss, which is actually in our documentation. Now, for sign language gloss checking, uh, we can have either very simple examples where we have just the lexeme together with the indicator at the end, the 2B. So we can easily split them and then look the lexical part up. Um, for more complex cases, we here we have first special token, dollar $num. Then we have a lexical part, which consists of three lexemes. And then we again have the indicator of one. So we remove the indicator and the special part and split the lexical information to get the three lexemes week after now, which we can look up in the dictionary. Um, similarly, if we don't have a special token in the beginning, but still have uh, several lexemes, we split the indicator, and then we split the lexemes. And a bit of a special case is this, where we have the special token name. So we split into the special part, the lexical part, and the indicator. But due to the special uh, token, we know that the second, the lexical part, is actually a proper name. So instead of splitting it, we can just treat it as a proper name and, for example, look it up in Wikidata that it actually is a name that we can verify. Now, a quick uh, demonstration of the type of detection. For example, if our statistics shows that we have uh, several occurrences of fence, fence, but we also have the spelling without the E or the EC um, flipped, then our typo detector could say that both of them have an edit distance of one to fence, but have a significant difference in frequencies, so they can be identified as typo. Um, on the other hand, if we look, for example, for glosses, which are usually very short, and if we would apply our um, typo detector, it would both identify one PI as a typo for one PL, but also ASP.F as a typo for ASP.C. Uh, but ASP.F is not really a typo, but this can be avoided by only applying the typo detector in case where the uh, token cannot be checked in the documentation. To conclude, the gloss checker provides corpus creators with feedback uh, on their gloss consistency. Um, the algorithm can rely on an existing dictionary or documentation to check both the lexical and the grammatical glosses. And if these do not exist, the dictionary and the uh, or the documentation, uh, the gloss checker can bootstrap uh, this information using the corpus data. And as a perspective, we want uh, to work towards one common algorithm for gloss checking across different types of corpora. Um, and given our experience with the two different glossing formats, this seems very doable. But if you have any questions, um, feel free to contact us. And uh, as mentioned before, the gloss checker is available as part of the corpus services on this GitHub link. Thank you for listening.